guys you're welcome thanks for clicking my name is bukumi how to study in ramadan this is a doctor's point of view doctor's advice Step top tips on how to study in ramadan let's check it out hey guys it's shireen aka halal girl new york i'm a doctor from london living here in new york and welcome back to the channel if you're new here don't forget to subscribe by pressing the little red box you see underneath this video since we're currently in the holy month of ramadan i thought that it would be really fitting to share with you guys my 10 top tips on how to study effectively during ramadan if you don't know what ramadan is and you're just here out of curiosity ramadan is the ninth month of the islamic calendar and it's a month in which god has asked all muslims across the world to fast during the daylight hours. It's a really special and holy month for us. I know that there can be some anxieties with how to study effectively when you're going the whole day without food and water. It's important to plan ahead, be smart and be wise and that's why I wanted to share my 10 top tips. And just a little bit of background about me. In 2018 I graduated from King's College London and I studied there for six years where I gained my MD slash MBBS degree and a Bachelor of Science. And in 2019 19, I spent pretty much the whole year studying for some very, very intense exams called the USMLE, which stands for the United States Medical Licensing Exam. So it's safe to say I have done a lot of studying in my time and Alhamdulillah, thankfully, all of those exams went really well. I can tell you guys now that it's definitely possible to study effectively and well and achieve all of your goals while studying during Ramadan. So let's begin. <laughs> Tip number one is adjust your schedule. And this is probably the most obvious one out there. If you're someone who can't study while you're feeling hungry or obviously even scientifically, our brain does need energy focus. to focus and concentrate and work to its best ability. So if you're able to and you're not working or going to school, then try and adjust your schedule accordingly. What I found that works for most people who don't have to be waking up early is trying to use some of those nighttime hours to study. This is a sample of what a regular day studying in Ramadan would look like for me. I would start my fast by eating suhoor at around four in the morning. Because I've just eaten and I'm already awake, I think this is a really good time to get a little bit of studying in. Your brain is fueled with energy, there's no distractions, it's a really peaceful time of the night and no one else is awake and I just personally felt like this is a really yeah, good time so to study a little bit so i would leave difficult concepts for this two hour window so from 4 30 to 6 30 i would study for two hours then i would go to sleep i would wake up at around 1 30 p.m and pray the duha prayer and then i'd be ready for another study sesh so from 1 30 to 6 30 i would have a solid six hours where i could do wow. a nice chunk of studying too i try and tackle the difficult concepts earlier while i know that my brain has energy and i'm feeling wide awake and then leave the easier topics for a little bit later when i know that i'm going to start feeling tired and hungry the end of the fast would be around 8 p.m. So from around 6.30 to 8, I would rest or worship or even have a nap. It really depended on that day. At around 8 p.m., I would open my fast. I would eat, pray and relax and spend a little bit of time with my family. Then my night shift would begin. I would study from around 11 till 3. Again, this night shift study time is really important because obviously it's nighttime, so you can eat, you can have your coffee next to you, your water, your snacks, whatever you want. So make sure you use this time wisely. I would study all the way until sunrise and then the cycle repeats itself. It's so important to find a schedule that works for you. If you're someone who has to be waking up early in the morning for class or meetings or looking after your kids or any of that, then I would recommend not going for this schedule and trying to keep somewhat of a more normal schedule and making sure that when you come back from class or you're finished with your responsibilities that you use that time before and after Maghrib really wisely and then sleep and make sure you're getting your rest. It may take you a few days to figure out what kind of schedule works best for you and what's making you feel most productive and most energized. Tip two is all about communication. Make sure you're telling your teachers about Ramadan. Not so that you can use it as an excuse or anything, no one should ever be doing that, but you may find that your teachers might be a little bit more understanding. If half the class are sitting in exam maybe on one day and the other half are sitting on another day that doesn't fall into Ramadan, they might be able to switch you around and be more understanding. On that note, if you have control over when you can schedule your exams, for example, the USMLE exam, make sure you're planning ahead and checking when Ramadan is 
is so that it doesn't necessarily fall in Ramadan. Obviously, if you don't have the choice, like my med school exams, they're all on a specific set date and some of my exams did fall in the middle of Ramadan. There's nothing you can do about that, mm. but I am gonna give you some tips that might help. Tip number three is all about setting your intentions. Because Ramadan is a holy month and it's one in which we would like to connect more spiritually to God and we also want to increase our worship, sometimes when you have a huge commitment like studying for a really important exam, it can feel like we might be missing out on all of those blessings of this holy month and it can really make you feel kind of down about it because so many of us look forward to Ramadan and look forward to building that spiritual connection with God. And this is where your intentions kick in. As you know, a lot of Islam is about your intentions. One thing that really helps me when I have to study in Ramadan is figuring out what my intentions are for studying for this exam. For example, my USMLE, I studied really hard for it so that I could pass it. I wanted to pass it so I could apply for a residency training job here in America. And I wanted a residency training job so that I can help people and fulfill my dream of being a doctor and make a halal English income and help people along the way. If you just take a minute out every time you sit at your desk to start studying and really reflect on your intentions and then have full certainty that God will accept these pure intentions as an act of worship and put blessings in your time, it can really help with that feeling that you're missing out on the barakah of Ramadan. Moving on, number four is your prayers. For those of you who don't know, Muslims are required to pray five times, five times a day. Just as fasting is obligatory for all healthy Muslims, so are your five daily prayers. So I wouldn't recommend missing these. I get super stressed with exams and these five minutes of prayer time really help me reflect, take a step back and look at the bigger picture. Speak to God, tell him that you're really struggling on a specific topic, ask him for help, ask him for guidance. I'm not trying to say that you can swap out studying and replace it with praying. You can't just pray for a miracle and expect your brain to just have all this information without actually studying for it and trying for it. You have to do both. So study hard, but also pray to God. Ask him for success in your ventures, in your exams, in your studies. And that's during Ramadan and outside Ramadan as well. Tip number five is to take breaks. If your brain's feeling fuzzy, your eyes are feeling tired, yes, and rest. you're struggling to stay awake or struggling to concentrate, take a break. That is totally okay. I know a lot of us so who are so used down. to just studying, studying, studying can sometimes feel guilty when we take breaks, but breaks are actually it's really important. important in studying effectively. If your brain cannot yeah. concentrate, have a nap. A good nap time length is about 20 minutes. I know that sounds super short, but it is enough to help your brain feel refreshed and re-energized. My next tip is to eat well at Suhoor. It can be tempting to just skip suhoor because you don't want to wake up in the middle of the night. Our bodies and brains really need that nutrition and energy. It helps to have a meal that consists of slow release carbohydrates and also protein. One smoothie that I've been trying is a banana, strawberry and date smoothie. Make sure you're also using suhoor to rehydrate. Dehydration is one of the number one causes of headaches. You don't want to be waking up in the middle of the day with a pounding headache and feeling super, super dehydrated. I've linked a few websites in the description box with some really yummy recipes that you can try out for Sahur. My next tip is don't overeat at iftar time. I know it sounds crazy for me to tell you not to eat everything that you've been daydreaming about throughout the whole day while you've been fasting, but for me personally, I've always found myself to feel really groggy and super, super sleepy if I overeat at iftar. You end up going into a full on food coma and that's not great for your concentration. What I recommend is having a small portion of food at iftar. Your body doesn't need as much food as your brain is telling your stomach that it needs. And if I'm hungry again, I'll go and have another plate of food. My next tip is to study with company. Obviously right now while we're in quarantine, it's difficult to actually physically study with friends who might also be fasting and you can feel like you're all doing this together. You're all fasting and studying, which is normally great and a great source of motivation. But don't forget, we still have the internet. So one thing I used to do when I was in long distance with my husband, we would FaceTime each other and then prop up our phones, mute ourselves and just sit wow. and study. I think this method can really help with your motivation especially during Ramadan, where you might feel like you're the only one having to study while fasting. Tip number nine is discipline. And I know this doesn't really sound like a piece of advice, but in all seriousness, sometimes in Ramadan, we can feel a little bit hard done by if we have to study 
and refrain from food and coffee and all of that so sometimes we can let our guard down and it's totally okay to forgive yourself if you've had a bad study day and it's totally okay to adjust your goals and your expectations during Ramadan but having discipline is so important when it comes to studying so sometimes you just have to really give yourself some tough love and make sure you get back to your desk don't forget there's so many people around the world right now who are studying and fasting you can do this you guys I did it my friends did it so many people I know have studied during Ramadan and have come out with amazing grades it is no doubt that studying during Ramadan takes a lot more willpower than studying during another day sometimes when you know you can just have a bag of crisps next to you and munch on those while you're studying you just feel a bit better about yourself because it feels a bit more chill but honestly holding on to that discipline is so important during Ramadan so many people ask me what my secret to doing well in school and exams is but honestly nothing beats hard work and tip number 10 is don't forget to make dua who better to speak to when you're stressed about an exam a concept isn't sticking into your head than to speak to God just as a general pointer throughout medical school School. before I started studying for any exam I would always make specific du'as that are tailored towards helping you in your studies. I've linked some in the description box if you're interested. Once I found those prayers that I really liked I would print that page out and I would just stick it right in front of me while I was studying. That reminded me that whenever I started my day out by studying or I returned from a break and needed to start studying again that I would just have a quick look at that piece of paper and read out the du'a and having full faith that God is hearing you when you're saying these du'as I found it really comforting. By reading a du'a, it's not gonna magically mean that you know all the information that you could possibly need, but sometimes if you really are struggling on a topic and then you read a du'a, I found that the next time I come to it, I've just kind of understood the concept a little bit better. So it's important to not underestimate the power of du'a. And if you don't wanna find a specific one in Arabic, remember that God speaks every language in the world and he understands you and he hears you. If you're not Muslim or you are Muslim, but you're not used to incorporating as many practices into your daily life and your routines some of what I've said might sound a little bit strange because my religion is such a huge part of not just my everyday life but also my identity I couldn't really ignore these points that really added value to me if you personally have different beliefs and don't share the beliefs as me that's totally okay I still appreciate you watching this video and maybe you even learned something new about Islam but regardless of what your religion or beliefs are I do think it's really important to be respectful and mindful so they are my top 10 tips for how to study a effectively during Ramadan. At the end of the day, everything is in God's hands. So at least you can feel rest assured knowing that all you can do is try your best. And that's all that anyone really expects of you. And just to recap, we had adjust your schedule, tell people you're fasting, don't forget to set your intentions, don't forget about your prayers, take breaks if you need them, eat something healthy and wholesome during Sahur, don't overeat at iftar time, Study with people who are in the same boat as you and who might also be fasting. Don't forget that you will require discipline. And finally, don't forget your du'as and to pray for success in all that you do. I really, really hope that you enjoy this video. I wow, <laughs> I really enjoyed this video. As a non-Muslim, I've learned a lot, guys. I've actually learned a lot about how to adjust your schedule. You know, this is a beautiful way to communicate to God. I, I think... You can actually adapt this method even as a non-Muslim in your religion. You can actually adjust your schedule, you know, if you are not a Muslim. But let's let's leave that one aside because now is the season of Ramadan. Like you said, you need to adjust your schedule based on how convenient it is for you. You can imagine she she studies six hours, she study like three hours again. So in total, she she can study let's say up to nine hours per day and if you know your schedule isn't like that and you know the nature of your work you can as well adjust and the most important thing is to study and just have a timetable i think that's the meaning of adjust your schedule you have a timetable daily timetable that and you have to follow so that you will not miss out on anything so that even though you're tired or less busy you know you you get the reminder you can even set a reminder on your phone and one thing i liked about this adjusting your schedule is the fact that you know i never knew a muslim t um, break their fast around 4 a.m in the morning and you can also break your fast in the night around 8 p.m that means they break fast i think that should be twice in a day i don't know how it works but in in christianity it's six to six sometimes you can start your fast 
12 in the midnight and you break you no know, maybe the, depending on you, you know on your strength you can break in the afternoon 12 noon you know 3 p.m or 6 p.m so another thing is communication you know you need to communicate well to like she said when, based on the nature of your work let them know that ramada is coming so that they can be much more you know um understanding they can actually put you in mind and it can favor you one way or the other depending on where you work there's some working place that no matter how you let your intention know they might not actually give you the break or or lessen your work the way you deserve it but i think most companies will try to understand and lessen the work of their workers during ramadan as a muslim so set your intention prayers taking break and you know say you must not overeat don't be too filled up because one thing I've noticed about you overeating or eating too much is you will not have the strength to do the work you're supposed to do. You feel tired or sleepy. So just eat average food. Like just eat something light or eat. don't eat to, to the fullest. Don't eat because you want to be full so that you can have a chance to study. Then, you know, she said you need to study with your friends. You know, and make maybe you can do a group study, maybe with your family. It helps to you know, it helps you to learn more and help you help you guys to interact and study. And you know, every, when everybody's bringing their own opinion, you you get to learn more about you know the book. You get to learn more about Quran and the dua. Dua is like you praying, maybe praying for this purpose. Okay, is a is like saying. Um, I'm praying for blessing, I'm praying for protection, I'm praying for, I think that's how dua is. So there's a particular prayers meant for protection, there's a particular prayer meant for, you know, faith in God, you know, ble blessing and the rest. This was a beautiful one. Happy Ramadan to you guys. I pray this Ramadan brings peace, joy, happiness, and may Allah grant all your desire. Inshallah. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.